Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This is episode 300, Depression, a New Hormonal View. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So I am a licensed counselor and I've been in private practice for almost 35 years. And I've taught counseling at college for people who, at uh, university for people that wanted to become counselors for 25 years. And my training about things like d- depression and anxiety and OCD and PTSD all had to do with uh, understanding personality. I studied personality theory, you know, how, does, how do people get to be this way, what makes mm-hmm. them this way, defense mechanisms, coping strategies, quote, mental health. And very, very little uh, physiology, mm-hmm. very little medicine. Uh, th- that was considered more in the realm of psychiatry, mm-hmm. which requires that somebody be a physician. Okay. So over the years, what I started out knowing that I knew mm-hmm. and being very mm-hmm. confident about it, I've had to learn was pretty suspect. And I, in, in changing and evolving as a therapist, as a clinician, I had to learn to work more closely with physicians who would tolerate me, who would speak to me, because I'm pretty mm-hmm. low on the totem pole, uh, and value my input well, about patients that we share. They don't want to counsel people. They want to just they give don't. them, I mean, not in reality. They want to talk, most of them just want to talk to you about your medications well, and, and figuring them out. Well, and what I've through the years is that most psychiatrists don't do therapy. They do medicine. Right. Mm-hmm. And so their their side of the scale is more heavily weighted on medicine, and mine is more heavily weighted on personality theory and coping strategies, and uh, let's look at uh, repetitive patterns. And, well, you, you know, do problem solving. Problem solving, exactly. Uh, but what we found is more and more and more evidence, more scientific research to support the reality that hormonal balances play a significant role in whether somebody suffers from anxiety, whether somebody mm-hmm. suffers from depression, uh, fatigue. I mean, there's a whole cluster of you know, chronic fatigue kind of things mm-hmm. that I never looked at the physiological aspect of it. I mean, very commonly I would say to somebody, well, you need to go get a full workup from your doctor, mm-hmm. see if there's anything else going on that we need to talk about. But regular practitioners didn't seem to know more about this than I did. But right. what we are now finding yeah, is that true. people who are doing the hormonal research and specializing mm-hmm. in hormonal replacement are starting to learn a lot more about the role that balancing hormones has in all of these disorders. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And most of our research comes from, we just recently mm-hmm. attended a conference where Dr. Mark Gordon, uh, who is at Millennium Healthcare in California, has written a book on uh, neuroscience and and uh, traumatic brain injury, traumatic brain dis- psychiatric illnesses of all kinds, and the data that he shared with us is so exciting and new. Mm-hmm. We want to share it with you because it really is changing the whole reality of how we look at mental health. Or mm-hmm. it, it, I expect that it will. Uh, not that it'll put therapists out of business, and not that they mm-hmm. won't serve a function, and that people still don't do to need to do some talk therapy, but that for many of the symptoms that mess up their lives, they need to also get checked for hormonal balance. I mean, this this is kind of a, this this is an intermediary. I kind of view it in, as a picture mm-hmm. of this is the kind of treatment you need. You still need counseling. You may right. still need some psychiatric medications. Well, as Hillary Clinton said, it takes a village. Yeah, well, it, it, it does take a village, So, and you quote her a lot. In any case... <laughs> Just to get under your skin. So, um, in any case, this is, a, this is in between counseling, because we all, we all probably need counseling. Uh, I mean, you should have a counselor on speed dial if you're if you're concerned about your relationships and things like that but but in in terms of if you've ever been diagnosed with depression anxiety mania right. bipolar disorder uh schizophrenia 
um, or uh, traumatic brain injury, which can look like all of these things, and post-traumatic stress syndrome, all of those things have a physiologic or chemical basis. Right. So it's not like our personalities are just who we are. Our personalities are supported by our hormones. The hormonal uh, milieu that we live in and the chemical milieu that our brains live in uh, actually determine how we respond to things and how we act and what we want. It's not just what our past experience is or, or what our mom did. Or experience of some, <laughs> some kind. Yeah, it's not yet. Yeah. At least it's always the mother. Yeah. Uh, That's why it, I it's, said that. It's not just those things. You know, as Ronald Reagan said, it better living through chemistry. True, true. But uh, this is this is something that that to me is the foundation of mental illness. In other words, right now we're finding out things like your gut makes your serotonin, not just your brain. Right. Serotonin is the feel good hormone that keeps you from being depressed. So we found that out in the last 10 years. Now we're finding out that our hormones, our estrogen, our testosterone, uh, our, our brain chemicals that are stimulated by estrogen, dopamine and, and serotonin, and also growth hormone, are the hormones stimulate these hormones in our brain. So the hormones all over our body cross the blood-brain barrier, and they stimulate the production of all of the neuro uh, hormones and neurotransmitters that we need. So if we don't have one of those hormones, if it's deficient or if it's over overproduced, then those hormones are the reason we're depressed. Exactly. You know, clinically diagnosed depression is pretty serious. And it's difficult because the people that suffer from it, you know, some of the best advice we give them is you have to fake it until you make it. You, you have to act as if you are not uh, unable to get out of bed. You're not unable to go to work. You're not unable to take Because you have to survive. Yeah, you, you have to do those things. And they look at us like we're crazy. You know, mm -hmm. you don't understand how limited I am, how, how hard this is for me to get up and take a shower or to mm -hmm. go to work or to answer the phone or whatever it might be as a symptom of severe depression. And the people around them, people in their lives, even their therapists, don't want to spend a lot of time with them because it's, it's really hard. After a while, it's a downer to be with somebody that's severely depressed and you get frustrated because you're doing your very best for them and they're not getting better. So then, and, then you develop sort of a reaction formation of, I don't really want to talk to you about this anymore because you're not trying. And they right, are that's trying. what appears. Yes. That's what it appears to other people. Right. But you, we found in other, other ways, you can't fake having hormones. Right. When my hormones were taken out with my ovaries, right. I was depressed, sad, exhausted, didn't want to get out of bed for the very first time in my life because I have a lot of, I mean, my natural... My, my, my natural hormonal environment gave me a lot of joy in my life, no matter what I was doing. You have that if I was, hormone. If I, yeah, that, well, that's just how it reacts in me. But it's also, uh, it gave me the will to go do things and, mm -hmm. and produce something during the day and be productive. So when I lost my hormones, I lost myself. And that's what it feels like to people with depression. The problem is right now, just like with so many things in medicine, we aren't fixing the problem. We're fixing the next step. So the problem may be hormonal. We're not fixing that part because of course you're just getting old and you don't need those things. Or you're just, for some reason, it has nothing to do with hormones. Well, there's a huge industry that gets a lot of money. Because they make treating, the next step. Yes. It's, they treat serotonin the deficiency. of the various breakdown components. Right. They give you the chemicals that the hormones are supposed to produce in your brain they just give you the chemicals, Prozac makes serotonin and, and other, like, well, Butrin makes some norepinephrine and serotonin. So there are many things that cause you to have brain hormones, mm -hmm. but every patient that comes to me on those says, you know, it's just not the same as being normal when I'm just not depressed. And the reason oh, that yeah. is, is because... They don't have the hormones that do so many other things, but actually give you your own not depression, well, I can tell your you own cure of depression. The, the people that I saw who were diagnosed as bipolar really resisted taking their medicine. Mm 
mm-hmm. because they felt like they were not themselves, like there was a cushion around them where they, uh, like an invisible bubble where they couldn't get out. There's so many side effects to the drugs, and, too. And there are side effects. So what Dr. Gordon is saying is that we need to reexamine this in terms of looking at their hormone balances, because he said that that depression, in specific reference of depression, is secondary to, it comes after hormone imbalances uh, for a, a large area of things. So he says depression has been found to be secondary to inflammation of the brain, one. High cortisol levels, two. Low thyroid, three. Low testosterone levels, four. Insufficient growth hormone, five and low dopamine levels, six. So all six of those things, depression occurs if you have them, severe clinical depression. And those are all hormones, and those are all things that should be able to be replaced replaced. or stimulated to be be produced in your own body. Except that we then run into a problem. Uh, The government of the United States has determined that human growth hormone is such a nefarious and untrustworthy substance that normal people can't have it, and that oh, norm, not normal, aging, no aging people can have it. Normal doctors can't use it. Uh, it's on a very restricted access list. Only for children who aren't growing. Who aren't growing, and because they the clearly don't understand for. growth hormone. But because <laughs> we need it our whole lives. So, Dr. Gordon says the most difficult hormone that is needed in depression is growth hormone, and for whatever reason, the United States government has limited access of this hormone to doctors and to the public. Uh, They're afraid of abuse. They're afraid it'll cause negative impact of some kind. And mainly they're afraid young athletes will take it and try to become supermen. It's just like, you're going to hate this, but it's just like guns. If the right person is giving the growth hormone, it is not dangerous. If you pick your patients properly, it's not dangerous. But the criminals... The young guys can get it from Eastern Europe by internet. Right. They can they can get they can get all kinds of drugs, anabolic steroids, not testosterone, anabolic steroids, which are different right. from Eastern Europe. So people who want to be criminals or, or are criminals or are want to get around the system can get it, but I can't prescribe it. And patients who really need it aren't gonna break the law to get it. Right. So and doctors aren't going to break and the law. And doctors to aren't going to lose their license over this, right. which is the only reason that in certain circumstances, I I think somebody needs it, but I can't write right. it. Right. And I can't give it. So that's one of the things that they clamp down really hard on doctors for. And as much as I know I've got an answer to a problem, the patient needs it, I can't give it if I want to continue practicing medicine. So Dr. Gordon says that 61% of all the people that are diagnosed with growth hormone deficiency are also seriously depressed. Right. And that if they receive the replacement of growth hormone, if that's the only thing they get, not any antidepressants and not therapy, but if they receive the growth hormone replacement, then they are not depressed. It's, I mean, it's a one-to-one correlation. If you can replace the growth hormone, the depression is not there. Which is so frustrating for me. It really is. And for the rest of us, because that means if I have a growth hormone problem and I develop depression, which is severe, that limits me in so many other ways to function in life, that I have to take antidepressants. You have to take like which five drugs because they don't. side effects. They don't all work like, like normal, like being well, normal. And, and the way that works is the doctor will say, okay, you're a 69 year old male, generally. They respond well to this antidepressant, mm-hmm. so we'll start you on that one. Then I have to be on it for two weeks to find out if I'm getting any change. Mm-hmm. Then if, if we don't feel like that's working or helping sufficiently, it's trial and then error. I have to come off of it for two weeks before they can start me on the next it's one. It's very frustrating. Most people just quit. And it may be four months before I find the right one. It's just like like in <laughs> if, if you have ADD... You can't get to an appointment because you can't remember it. Right. So it's hard to get hard to get treatment. Well, if you have depression, you can't follow this. Try this. Wean off that. Try your ears too depressed to have the motivation to go do that, mm-hmm. which is so so sad. And we ha- but but by giving growth hormone, mm-hmm. we would be able to not only treat these depress depressive symptoms. Right. But it also helps you heal. It builds your bone. It makes you not become frail. It helps your muscle growth. I mean, it ba- basically 
stimulates all those things that we had when we were younger, like muscles and bone and hair and fingernails. And I mean, it, ke it keeps us from dissolving with age. But my, my theory and my way of doing this is I give testosterone right. to both men and women. And in most men and women, that stimulates growth hormone. And I don't have to give it, and it doesn't do anything bad. It has the natural regulations. As long as their system still can generate it, it can cause their system to accelerate the generation of the growth hormone. Right, right. And so that does keep people from being depressed because I have pe pe women especially come in and go, everything's perfect in my life. Yeah. I look at my life in a logical way. My life is just how I wanted it to be. I've got a great husband, great kids, or even if you don't have great kids, they become great later. <laughs> they yeah. go through that stage. When they get but, under your influence. That's right. The but, they're, uh, but, but I'm so depressed. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to go right. do anything. I don't feel like playing golf. I don't want to do any of the fun things I used to do. And, and then you don't I give understand them understand why. And so in our culture, the message that comes back is because you failed in some way, you're broken in some way, you're not trying. You need to suck it up. You need to get your butt out of bed. You need to just do it. And just do that's it. horrifically cruel advice. It is. It's, it's it's impossible for people who are really depressed. But when I give them testosterone, right. four months later they come back in and they go, I'm back, which means I'm not depressed. I'm not on antidepressants. I'm not taking all those drugs I used to take, and I have my brain back, well, and I'm, I have my personality back. We, we were really uh, lucky because we had an opportunity to have a private conversation with Dr. Gordon, and one of the things that he told us was that uh, if you have to use antidepressants to treat depression, and that's the only tool that you have, you're really missing the boat if the, if the problem is growth hormone deficiency. Right. He said, if you give them gro growth hormone to, uh, to replace the lost growth hormones, you cure sleep disturbances, you raise energy levels, you increase motivation, you improve their sense of quality of life in addition to curing their depression. So all these things get better. But there are separate medicines and treatments given for each one of those issues mm -hmm. if they're not allowed to give growth hormone. All right. One one or two drugs for each one of those problems. You've got 12 drugs. Right. And doctor visits out the wazoo. Right. So, so, so that is it in itself exhausting. Yes. But he told us this and he was, he sees in his clinic, there's thousands of people that are being seen. He has many people as extenders and many right. other doctors working with him. But he knows all the data. He collects all the data. Right. And he is just amazed at what testosterone can do, what growth hormone can do, what replacing thyroid can do. And he contends that almost everyone is under-replaced on thyroid. Yeah. The way endocrinologists are trained, they are trained to give you the very least amount of thyroid, which won't make you feel good. It won't make you feel happy. It doesn't get rid of your symptoms of low thyroid like fatigue and depression right. and I mean, and obesity and inability to grow hair, nails, eyebrows. You know, he says the hormones that should re be replaced if they are low in depression, schizophrenia, mania, anxiety, OCD, and bipolar illness in those illnesses, if you have low hormones, and that's the whole point of, if you suffer from any of these things, get a hormone workup, go to a but doctor. But you've got to go to somebody who gets hormones. Do it. Don't go to an endocrinologist who really doesn't believe it and wants you to fail because they're going to see whatever they want to see in the lab. You need to go to somebody who really embraces the fact that tes the testosterone, growth hormone, thyroid, all of these hormones should be optimal throughout our lifetime. So, so these are the things he said, if you have any of those category labels that, that I've just read, he said, you need to get testosterone in both sexes, estradiol in women, growth hormone, thyroid, cortisol, pregnenolone, DHEA, and progesterone. So it, depending on where your imbalances are, if you can get those hormones replaced, then you have a significant opportunity to get rid of the disorders that we've mentioned or to significantly reduce their severity so that you can have a better quality of life and be able to live and function without taking 52 medicines and going to 13 doctors. That simpler solution mm -hmm. is find out if you can find a doctor that will replace your hormones that are low. They can run blood tests. They can tell them these are all low. And then the ones that are legal with, with the exception of growth hormone, they can replace and you can improve your general mental capacity and your general state of mood 
significant. There's there's a compounded substance, just as an aside. There's mm -hmm. a compounded medication called sermoraline. And sure. S E R mm -hmm. M, I think I'm spelling it right. M O R E L E I N. Samoralin. Right. And that is for people who, when they take testosterone, don't get a higher growth hormone. The growth hormone, for some reason, there's been some tra trauma to the brain, either PTSD or, or um, the traumatic brain injury. And those people, need to have their own growth hormone stimulated. The hypothalamus, which is above your pituitary, no longer sends messages to the pituitary to make growth hormone. But you can stimulate those people with somoraline. It takes the place of the, of the um, releasing hormone from your uh, hypothalamus. So we just kind of slip it in there and it stimulates growth hormone. These are for people who testosterone, it doesn't stimulate their growth hormone. Mm -hmm. This works... For other people, it's not probably as dramatic or as quickly effective as growth hormone, but it works well and it doesn't have the side effects of growth hormone because your body balances it all. So there is hope. <laughs> this discussion about depression and anxiety and bipolar and OCD and so on was given in the context of a larger discussion. And we, we're not going to go into more of that today, except just to mention a couple of brief points, and then maybe later we'll come back to this discussion. Uh, Dr. Gordon does a lot of work with the military in terms of treating soldiers that are suffering from PTSD and traumatic brain dis, uh, illness, uh, injury, P, uh, TBI. TBI. And all of these conditions and all of these concerns are significant components uh, of what we've been talking about. And so he, he says the most common symptomology associated with traumatic brain injury is fatigue. 100% of the patients are exhausted all the time. Disturbed sleep patterns, inattention with difficult concentrating, impaired memory, faulty judgment with slowed thinking, depression with and without anxiety and panic attacks, irritability with emotional outbursts of anger, diminished libido, difficulty switching between two tasks, alcohol abuse with drugs because they're trying to self-medicate. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you replace the hormones that are missing in these patients that have these symptoms from traumatic brain injury, you can alleviate many of these symptoms or moderate them severely. Part of so, that is that the traumatic brain injury, the first thing that's injured is the communication between that part of your brain, the hypothalamus and your pituitary, which then stimulates all these, these hormones. Right. So the problem is in that area. The problem is not enough hormone. The answer is give the hormones back. And especially with growth hormone. Especially with growth especially hormone. With, so, so if that doesn't happen and these people are not treated for their PTSD or their TBI in appropriate ways, then the suicide rate goes up. And right now we have like 45 soldiers a day that are committing suicide after 15 years of war that never seems to end in multiple uh, rotations to the war zone and then come back to America where, you know, they can stop at Dairy Queen and not, not get in trouble. Uh, and their marriages are falling apart. Their lives are falling apart. We really need to take a serious look at this. His argument is if we're going to take a serious look at it, we can do it more cheaply, more effectively if we start far enough up the food chain to get to the causative issues. The causative issues are hormonal imbalances. So please factor that into your thinking, factor it into your discussion with your physician and or your therapist. Get Dr. Uh, Gordon's book. Uh, it's written for physicians, so it may be difficult for some of us to it's understand It's called traumatic it. brain injury. I, I have to have some of it translated for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but at least begin to look for hope in that direction. And he'll do, he'll do Skype. He'll, he'll see you as a patient on Skype where you're seeing each other. Right. And he, he requires you do, just like I do, a bunch of blood work first and some other things. Fill out a huge um, questionnaire, even bigger than mine. You've sent some of your patients to him. Yeah, and I've sent some of my patients to him. So, so he does do those kind of interviews, even though he's in California. You don't have to right. go to California. Right. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com 
or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.